Gospel according to Matthew in the third chapter, beginning with verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. May God's word be revealed in this reading. Please be seated. Let us pray. Dear gracious Lord, may the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. They tell me that there is a TV show called The Voice. Now, I personally have never seen this TV show. But my understanding is that it is a group of performers that listen to talent that comes in. And they're listening for the voice, you know, the voice. That voice that will hold people's attention. My understanding is, is that those who are going to make the selection have their back to the performers. So they can't see what they are. All they can do is listen. All they can do is hear. All they can do is say, hmm, is this the voice that will change a generation, change music, or not? They're listening for, what era do you want to come from? Frank Sinatra? Elvis Presley? The Beatles! Now for young kids, that was Paul's band before Wings. And some people, wings? That was way beyond Paul McCartney. So what's the voice now? I dropped out of the music scene many generations ago, so it's like, okay. I used to watch MTV with my sons back when they were teenagers just to listen to what the music was that they were listening to and talk about what is that. But it's that voice that people keep looking for. It's that voice that says, I will listen to this. If you don't have the voice, you're not going to listen. You're going to tune it out. You're going to stop listening, and it's not going to be there. (laughs) Have you ever listened to the voice of God? Have you ever listened for the voice of God? Too many times in our lives we get so busy with the busyness of life that we fail to listen to God's voice in our world. Too many times we get so busy doing the things of life, worrying about, now did I put the rolls on for the uh, potluck? Hmm. What am I going to do at work tomorrow? Hmm. That we forget to listen that God is speaking to us. That God is coming into our lives and saying, this is what I want you to do. Now, a few times, God has talked to me. Now, I understand that that's strange for Methodists, that God would talk with us. But there are times that God has come to me and said, this is what I want you to do. One of those things was my calling. I didn't want to be a preacher. And over the next few weeks, you will understand and hear my journey to be where I am today. This was the furthest thing from my mind, to stand up in front of people and tell you you're a bunch of sinners. And unless you repent, you're going to hell. Now I'm from East Texas originally, so that's hell.
But God called me. I didn't hear any voices. I didn't hear any magic bells. I didn't have a flash of lightning. But one day as I was struggling with who am I, what am I to do, a certainty came over me. John Wesley's warming of the heart, his knowing for sure that's the path that he would be on. Did I stick on that path? Not always. I tried being a local preacher. They ran me off. Tried being a a chaplain, joined up for three years. Thirty years later, they kicked me out. <laughs> Tried to be retired, but good old friends, DSs, say, can you come and help us out? But it's that voice of God that sent me on the certainty, that sent me on the path that brings me here to right here and right now for you. I was fortunate enough to be stationed in Hawaii at one time. My son had an interview downtown. And so while he was in, the, it was a college interview, and so while he was there, I decided to walk up the street. It's a place called Fort Street. There was a McDonald's up there, and I said, ah, let's have an Egg McMuffin for breakfast and while my son's in the interview. So I walk in. And then this couple comes up beside me, and they're in pajamas, 10 o'clock in the morning at McDonald's. And it's like, ooh, don't you people have a life? And so I get my Egg McMuffin, and I go sit down, and while I'm sitting there, God talked to me. He said, Jim, who are you to judge anybody? Who are you to make an assessment of these people? Yeah, they're not wearing the same clothes you're wearing. Yeah, they look kind of ragged. Yeah, they might be street people. But who are you, you pompous person? It just so happened that that week we were, the, the scriptures dealt with Joseph in Egypt and his brothers had come asking for food. And God it spoke to me in that voice and says, Jim, you're Joseph. This is your brother and sister. They need your help. So as I left that restaurant, went over to the couple and gave them a $20 bill. They looked at me and asked, why? And I said, because God told me to. And they said, thank you. Did it make a difference? I don't know. But it made a difference because I had to respond to that voice. Today we're talking about the baptism of Jesus. We can go on and on on the theological concepts of why did Jesus have to be baptized. Bill, the DS, and I sat through many classes at Perkins School of Theology. Why this? Why that? And it's like, okay. It doesn't make a difference. The same questions were being asked. Asked. Jesus comes to John and says, I need to be baptized. John says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why do you have to be baptized? I am the one who should be receiving your grace and your love. And if you go back and read that scripture again, it sounds like a seminary argument. Because Jesus responds, we need to do it, for this will fulfill all things. Theologians talking back and forth. But then, God 
spoke. And a voice came from heaven and said, This is my son. This is my beloved. Have you ever thought about the word beloved? Even as a, a, a teenager, I was kind of worried. Beloved, what is that difference from being loved? What is that? Why would that word be used instead of just, this is the person I love? But it says beloved. One translation that I read says, you are my son, claimed and marked by my love. So what God is saying at that point to everybody who could hear that voice is this Jesus of Nazareth has been claimed by my love for him this Jesus of Nazareth has been marked by my love for him and that gave him the power to move on in life to become Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the chosen one, the anointed one of God's kingdom. And that's our faith. That's what we live. Have you been claimed by God? Have you been claimed by God's love? Have you been marked by that love? Or are you just one of those folks that will get into the theological discussions? Because when you hear the voice of God, you have to respond. When you hear the voice of God in your heart with certainty, with love, with care, you cannot do anything else but respond to that voice. What are the voices that you're hearing today besides mine? It's the voices in the back here. The voices of moms and dads, the voices of children, the voices of television, radio, music, the voices that tell us what we should have, what we need, what we would hope for, how to place our money in certificates of deposit or this bank or that bank, putting our stuff and resources here. What's the voices that you're wrestling with? And I invite you to listen for the voice of God in your life. And I invite you to hear it, not with your ears, but with your heart. To hear it not with what you might recognize, but with your entire being. For it is only then when we respond to God's word with our whole being and life that we can change the world. And so the choice is easy. We can ignore the voice. I don't hear anything. God's not in my life. It's over there. Or we can embrace the voice and respond with every fiber of who we are as a human being. Jesus didn't need to get baptized. But he was. You don't need to affirm your faith before everybody. But you do. And more than that, you got to live it. You got to be it. You got to face tomorrow with Jesus by our side. Let us pray.